All right, so the first thing we're going to go over is the filament holder, okay? So if you can grab that, and they should have the little hardware already installed in it. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to take the base plate, and then we're going to take one of the sides, and you're looking for one of these small Allen wrenches. So let me swap cameras so you can see it. And this is going to be the second smallest in your pack. And so if you guys can find that, that's what's going to fit these small screws right here. And we're going to use that to screw these together. Looking for the toolkit. They should have one big toolkit, right? They have one and everything. More caliper and glass. Did we only get one? You should have one big toolkit, yes. Oh, okay. Yes, so we have the one big toolkit. Hold on, I'll take everything out. Yeah, and so you should be able to separate a couple of those and uh, we, we can work with that. Situated. All right, sounds good. Y'all just let me know when you're ready to continue. Okay. All right, so it's going to be. All right, so we currently, everybody, we have a toolkit, so we'll just kind of pass around. Yeah, so let me go over this real quick so you guys can start working on them real fast. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of poke that out like so, okay? And then we're going to take the build plate and we're going to, the base plate, and we're going to insert it to these little pieces right here. And then we're going to drop the screw and let it kind of sink into that spot that's the divot. And then we're going to hold the nut and then we're going to screw it on the outside. And then that should screw. And we just want it to be snug. We don't want it to be too tight. We don't want to crank it down because this is acrylic and it is possible to break it. So if that ever does happen, you can always 3D print a new one of these. So we do have files for that. And if you feel like you do need something like that, we can always uh, give you that file and you can always print those off for yourself. So if you could do that with each one. And so you notice there, ooh, sorry, that the screw just kind of sinks all the way in and then it should be good to go. And then you'll do the exact same thing for the opposite side here. And these can be a little bit fickle, so just uh, try your best to uh, slide it in carefully and be light with it, just to make sure we don't break it, so. And that's what it should look like afterwards. All right, we're sharing an Allen wrench, so it'll take us a few minutes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, y'all just let me know whenever you kind of get those together, and we'll continue on. And, you know, teachers, we're the worst. So, we are the worst. Don't, don't hold back. So I know that. Um, so you all sell the kit separately, the uh, toolkit separately, right? Yes, we do have the three D printing toolkits for you to purchase separately. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. 
And those are going at $30. Okay. Are we thinking that we're going to need a toolkit for a printer or a car? I don't know. Are we, is this something that they do every single time? No, this uh, filament holder is not something you will do every time. Pretty much you set this up once, and unless you're transporting it or needing to break it down, you won't have to ever do this again. Yeah, we probably Yeah. So I think maybe a toolkit for each station would be more than optimal, and that if one of the printers, because you're going to be kind of moving those around in sets of three, that you should be able to utilize all the tools within those for those three printers, and it should go well. Okay, so so you're thinking we should do two per two per three, or are you thinking a toolkit per? per yeah, toolkit per station. Okay. Hmm. Uh, how are y'all doing? Okay. You don't want it too tight, you just want it snug. So we're feeling pretty good about those? I think we're pretty good, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So now we can take our filament spools, which are these big rolls, and we can actually take the nut and bolt that we have here, and we can slide this into it and then put the nut and bolt through the middle of the filament. And then it fits directly upon there. <laughs> so one thing when you do put these on the filament holes make sure you do have this plastic sticking through one of these small holes here on the side so that it doesn't unravel because unraveling can often cause issues and it can kind of get uh, twist it up and then whenever it's trying to print it'll actually pull and it won't get enough filament out of it. So we like to thread it through one of those holes just to make sure that it's safe and it doesn't spool all over the place. Also one more thing is that you want this filament coming over the top. So whenever we thread it we kind of want it coming like this so that it goes into our printer a lot easier. So that would just be a, a flipping the filament over if it's not that way already. And so this filament in particular from Push Plastic is from here in Springdale, Arkansas. It's actually our local provider and it is PLA, which is a polylytic acid. And it actually has a special ingredient that makes it super flexible. So that is one thing that is really nice about it. And it makes it a lot easier to work with. And so this is a biodegradable plastic and it is made from a um, cornstarch and so it doesn't produce any dangerous fumes and that's why we use this open housing type of deal 
with our 3D printers because I'm sure you've seen a lot of enclosed printers, but those aren't necessary if you're not causing fumes to be spewed out into the classroom. So. So do we feel comfortable with the filament, or are we ready to move on a little bit? Does it matter which fold or which fold it goes through? Uh, no, it doesn't matter which hole it goes through, just so long as it actually keeps it steady in there and that it doesn't unravel whenever it's loose. Okay. Awesome. So next up, we're going to be going over a lot of material. So I kind of want you guys to just bear with me. And as we go through, hopefully you guys can develop a couple questions. And here towards the end of the section, we can talk about those and we can kind of converse on. Um, so the first kind of things we're going to talk about is we're going to go over four steps to print. And so the first step that we're going to have is probably the longest step and it's going to take the most amount of time and learning. And that is mainly your design step. And so your design is often utilized in a CAD program. And so that's utilized from anywhere from cloud-based to nice programs that you can download for free for educational purposes. And so one that we like to use, and because it is free and it is cloud-based, is Tinkercad. And Tinkercad is a great introduction. It utilizes shapes in order to create larger objects. And so the combination of those and grouping of those objects ends up creating a shape that you can use for a design. Another one is also called Onshape. And Onshape is actually a traditional type CAD design, and that's where you create a 2D sketch on a flat plane, and then you turn it into a 3D structure. And so that's a little bit more advanced, and depending upon kind of how you feel and how your, your students feel, then you can always go into Onshape and kind of explore it. And so that is something that we can help you with, and if you do have questions kind of going over what you should do for your designs, and how you should utilize that, then you're welcome to contact us and we would love to bounce ideas back and forth. So above that we have Inventor, which Inventor is going to be much more of a professional type of CAD program. And I personally like Inventor a lot, and Inventor and Fusion 360, which are both available for free at, with an education email or a .edu, then you can always download that and utilize that. Now, it is a robust program, and there's so many functions that it can be a little bit overwhelming, but hopefully you can work through that and you can kind of become comfortable with that type of design. And so that also has the 2D sketch to 3D object. So if I heard you right, it was a little bit hard, but somebody was using Fusion 360 already? Uh, in the upper school? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Fusion 360 is a great program, and it is very similar to Inventor, and it has pretty much all of the same construction options that you utilize in Inventor. So I really do like it, and that one is cloud-based, and you can collaborate with other people consistently. And, you know, if you have a group of partners, that doesn't mean just one person is doing design, and then they swap off. It means that people can be on three different computers, and all of them can utilize the designs and kind of see through the steps that someone was already creating that object. I'm sorry, what was that? We pretty much have a lot of just new people to 3D printing. Yeah, and that's where the Tinkercad kind of comes in. And then, um, so it's a great way to start and kind of get that idea and that visualization of 3D objects. And so that's what I would recommend if you're kind of starting out with your students and for yourself, that Tinkercad is a good spot to begin in. So now we're going to move on to the second step. And the second step is... There's a lot that goes into the second step, and it's actually where we install our slicing program. So we will need our computers for this, and a slicing program that we're going to use is called Cura, which is actually made by Ultimaker as an open free source program, and we utilize it in order to, with our printers, because of our operating system. It works well with it, and also our operating system on these devices is an open source. And so what we're going to do now is, if you, you can either install the 15.046, that is on the SD cards that you guys came with the packs, 
or you can also download the 262 that is online at Cura right now. And kind of, do you guys have a preference of which one we do? Okay, so if we're going to download the one from online, it's uh, much more updated and it is pretty easy to use. So if you just type in Cura into a Google search, and then it should be the first one at the top of the page, and we're going to download Cura 2.62. Can you spell that, Cura? Yeah, C-U-R-A. What? C-U-R-A. And so what the slicer program is going to do for us is whenever you export a file from a design program, you export it as an STL file. And that is basically a stereo lithography. And what that creates is a lot of triangles on the surface that you created. And those triangles are all connected by vertices and edges in order to create a shape in a 3D object. And so what it happens whenever we export it, we need to put it into a slicer program, which is what Cure is. And Cura changes that, the idea of triangles into a numerical control value language. And so what happens is it takes it and it cuts the object into lots and lots and lots of different layers. And those layers are then given coordinates for the printer to follow so it can print up further and further, and thus making basically layers upon layers to create your 3D object from one filament. filament. Of course. Okay, so listen. What you fill in on that, it doesn't matter. The printer, the other, you can put lesson for you. If you if you choose on download and say I don't want to share my information, it should immediately download it for you, and you won't have to fill in that information. I tried that earlier. I don't think it worked that way, but we'll see. And then once they have it downloaded, are we running the EXE? Yes, once you have it downloaded, you'll run the EXE and do a normal installation. And then let me show you a screen that you should get to. So you will come to this screen and it'll pop up Ad Printer and it'll have the background of Cura. That's where I want you guys to pause until everybody's caught up so we can go over that together. Okay. Yes, please install the Arduino drivers. That's for connecting a USB to the printer if you would like to use that functionality.
Yeah, you should be able to click through the install process until you get to this screen. And we do want to make sure to install the Arduino drivers. And then we should also open STL files in Cura. And that should be a small selection box that pops up. And then we're going to click next through the user license agreements and install the program. people that we do have um, where you are the ad printer it doesn't have the same options okay so what options does it have whenever you look at it it starts with the ultimator 2 plus okay well I think that should be fine because we're actually not going to be using the ultimaker just so long as it says custom and we can select that value then we should be all right all right let us double check I don't think it's of course How about other? You don't have a custom on there? It doesn't say custom. Hmm. Okay, well, we can use other. We're just going to have to change a couple more values, which is going to be all right. Okay, well, uh, how about we all choose on other than and we'll all go through the same oh, steps so that we're aligned. You know what? The flash drive version is the one that doesn't have um, custom. Oh, you know what? Right. Um, we were looking to download the 262 from the internet. The 15.046 is going to be a little bit of a different setup from the one that we're utilizing right now. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Awesome. That sounds great. So we should all be kind of at the screen. And so we did download this and we should be able to click on custom. Is that right? Yes. yes. Okay. So what we're going to go ahead and do is click on custom and it's going to say custom FDM printer. So I'm going to change the name here first and I'm just going to type in NWA 3D and I'm going to say it's an A5, which is the type of printer that you guys have right now. And then I'm going to click add printer. It's going to take a little while to load, and then it's going to pull up in an ad printer machine settings. And so this is the first couple settings that we're going to change. And okay. hold on, hold on. Alrighty, sounds awesome. So here we're going to start from the left and we're going to go down and then we're going to move from the right and then down. So the first setting we're going to change is called X or width and we're going to change that value to a total of 125 millimeters, which is also going to be right about 5 inches. And so what we're setting up here is the build plate size. And then here on Y depth, we're going to choose 150. And for the Z height, we're going to leave that at 100. All right, hold on. Okay, so the build plate shape is going to be rectangular, so we're going to leave that value alone. We're not going to check either of these boxes because the A5 doesn't have a heated bed, and we also don't want the center to be zero. Make sure the G-code flavor or type of G-code is going to be RepRap and Marlin. Marlin is the operating system we use. Next, we're going to change the print head settings, and we're going to change all of these values down to gantry height to zero millimeters. Mm -hmm. 
also? Yes, Gentry is also going to be zero. We're going to have one extruder, and then we're going to choose the material diameter. So if you were to look on the side of your filament, you would see that the diameter or the size is 1.75 millimeters. And so that's what we're going to change this value to, 1.75. Do we have a sticker on the side? And they're all the same, so in our case, 1.75. Yep, all the filament you should have should all be 1.75 filament. And then we're going to leave the nozzle size at 0.4 millimeters as the size we have. Okay, so is everybody comfortable with these settings? Okay, so I'm going to keep moving on just for lack of time. And I'm going to click finish. So next part I'm going to have is we should be here at our build plate screen. And so this is just going to be the area that we can work within and also the size of our printer here. The next things that we're going to change is a couple values over here on the right hand side. So notice that right now it says recommended. What we want to do is we want to change that to custom in order to edit a couple of the values that we don't currently see. So if you could click that slider up here at the top and it's going to pull up a lot of these. Now yours are probably going to be minimized and all you have to do is click on the down arrow and it'll show the value. Okay, so this section is full of information and I know I'm gonna go a little bit quick. So if we can kind of hold on to our seats and we can get through this a little bit, it'll help us out a whole bunch. And you can always look at, if you hover over an item, it will tell you more about it and it will give you a description and you can also watch this video later. So here at the layer height, we have 0 0.1 millimeters. That is a very nice quality print and that is the lowest print quality that, or the highest print quality, excuse me, that we can do on the A5s effectively. So we can choose that value from anywhere from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. So the prototyping is going to be a good range at 0 0.3 and it's going to give you a rough estimate and a lack of finish while the 0 0.1 will be much smoother and much nicer. So we can leave that value at 0 0.1. That is kind of up to you to change. Generally we say basically for any kind of initial print, we put it at 0 0.2 for uh, the time quality that it provides. The next values we have is going to be the shell. And the shell is the wall thickness and top and bottom thickness. What this means is when it creates an outside layer, it actually creates an outside layer that will be 0 0.8 millimeters thick. And so we're going to leave both of those values at that same set. Next, the infill or the infill density is going to be how durable it makes the shape and how full of plastic it creates the inside of the object. And so we can use this value from anywhere from 5 to about 25% and that gives you a good quality while still conserving materials. So I'm going to leave that value also at 20% right now. Next we're going to have material. And the printing temperature that we want to use for this specific type of plastic is going to be 220 degrees Celsius. The reason this is because is that push plastic puts a special ingredient that makes it extremely flexible like you saw earlier. And so by utilizing that component, it has to print at a 
much higher temperature than normal. Next, we're going to change the diameter of our filament. And if you can remember, our filament was already at a certain size. So I would like you guys to change that to the value. Next, we're going to have flow percentage, and we want to leave that at 100%. Of course, our models are going to be optimal, and we want them to always print at 100%, but depending upon the value that you change here, it'll either extract a little bit more or a little bit less for, from your material. And we do want to make sure that retraction is enabled. No, this will, this will be used only for the first setup on either a user account or a new computer. This will save your settings and you should be able to use this anytime on the computer you currently have. Next, we're going to have print speed and I believe you guys only have two sections here. And so you're going to have the print speed and the travel speed. So for our print speed, we're going to select 50 millimeters per second. We find this is a good speed for our printers to effectively create layers and also make sure that the prints don't end up being jarred by the printer head. Travel speed is generally double what we create our print speed, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 120 millimeters per second. The next section will be print cooling, and we do want print cooling on. We would like the fan to make sure that it is working so that we can utilize that function. Next is going to be support. Support creates shell structures within an object or with the outside of an object to make sure that it can print in a mid-air kind of area. And okay, hold on one second, sorry. You're fine. Hold on, hold on. For some reason, I have lost. Okay, we're good. Okay. So here on support, we want to click generate support. It'll actually pop up a couple new functions for us and we'll change those values. So it says support placement. We like to recommend using everywhere just to make sure that whatever model you do print, it does create supports and it will come out you know, effectively as a full sized object. If you don't have supports and it has an overhang of greater than 45 degrees, it's possible that the plastic can slump and it'll actually be less quality and it'll float below the object that you had originally. Next is build plate adhesion and we're going to choose skirt. And this, we use skirt just to make sure that the object is within the area that we can use and also it helps to prime our extruder or get the plastic through the extruder nozzle so that we make sure that it's printing correctly by the time it starts the object. If you would like to use a different value here, we recommend using at brim. Brim will give it the value that you can actually suction cup to the build plate and it'll help the object from warping up if you have a very flat surface. We don't have any dual extrusion on this, so no need to select that value. And for the special modes, we want to make sure that is all at once. We don't have to click save to file. What, it, what that's asking for is for a 3D model to save to file. So that's going to be our next step. 
So once you create your design and you have your design ready and it's in an STL format, we can actually open it up within this program as a slicer. So what I'm going to do is click up here in the left hand corner and it says open file. And if you have your micro SD cards plugged in, you should be able to scroll to the SD card. Do you have an SD card? We only have the one SD card, right? Are you, no, that's easier. USB or micro SD? You're going to use an SD card. You should have something very much like... We have these two. Yes, you can either use the SD card or you can use something like this. If you can, oh, okay, so the USB. Yeah, so you can use either or. It's up to you. Just make sure that there is a small card inside that USB. So you should plug that into the side, and here on devices, you should see something pop up called NWA3D, and that's going to be our SD card. Did we all get to that file selection screen? Okay. Alrighty, so we should be, we should see Cura, STL files, and test prints in that folder. And we want to select on STL files, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the six-sided dice for this demonstration. And we're just going to click on open here in the bottom right. You should notice that that small dice appears on our build plate, and now we can actually use Cura to edit the shape or size, the rotation of it, and also how it's oriented. So does everyone have that file loaded into Cura? All right, so to edit that dice, we first have to click on the object, and then it should show us these arrows that allows us to either move it on any of the axes we would like. So we can manipulate it to sit somewhere else on the build plate if we would like it to. 
just by dragging the arrows, or we can also change the values up here in the top left-hand corner. Now, the value below that in the left-hand corner is called scale. This is going to allow us to either increase or decrease the size based upon its original size. If we chose to do 125%, we'll see an increase in the size that the object has. Directly below that, we will have rotate. And by grabbing any one of these axes, we can rotate the object either on its side or to an angle. So why don't we just rotate it 90 degrees to understand that function. The function below that is called mirror. And so we can mirror this object in some way if we would like to create a different position for it, but also maintain the object's appearance as it is. So let's move our object back to the middle of the plate. If you right click on the object, if I could right click here, you should see a value, all these values pop up and we want to say center selected model. We can also either delete the model or we can multiply it and create multiple different types. So I'm going to center the selected model and it should immediately put it in the middle of my build plate. Now we also have something called view mode. And view mode allows us to see the layers that the printer will actually use. So if we click on layers, it should generate the object in a different way. And so we can actually slide through the different layers that have been generated. And we can see the infill and how that actually is created. If we decided to change the infill density, we would see that structure lessened. So I'm gonna change back to solid and we're going to leave the cube alone. So as we rotated it and manipulated it as we wanted, we would be ready to save it to a removable drive. So if you could, to the bottom right-hand corner, we're going to click Save to Removable Drive, and it should immediately save it to the NWA 3D SD card. You'll see a little prompt that it says Save to, and you can now eject that SD card. You want to make sure that you save it on something that we can transport to the printer, so please save it to the SD card, but you can save it anywhere on your computer if you would rather transfer it later to the SD. So it says I can now eject it, and I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. Now I know our, our time limit is up at this point, but for the sake of time, and since we have so many people, I'm going to stay with you guys for as long as it takes for us to get our printers up and running. Uh, hold on one second. So the, the issue that we're running into now is we do have meetings to get going to, and we are running out of our schedule time. Um, I had a little trouble hearing you there. Could you speak to the mic a little bit closer? Yep. Hold on one second. We all have meetings. Yep. We have meetings that we need to go to. Is it cool here? Does everybody have a meeting they need to get to? Okay. So I think for those who are able to stay, are you wanting to stay? Sure. Yeah. sure. All right. So we're going to have a couple people disappear, but another group is still going to be here for you to finish. And okay. Awesome, sounds good. 
Um, that way we can finish with this group that we have right now and then those that were here for the beginning portion can actually watch the entire video and catch up on what they may have missed. Stop recording and start it again. All righty, sounds good. So now for a recap, we, sh we went over a little bit about what we're going to design, and now we've installed Kira, changed the settings, and sliced our own model. So as long as everyone has the model saved onto an SD card, we're good to move on to the next section. Okay, so I'm gonna stop screen sharing now, and we're going to move over to the printer. And now we're going to do a little bit of the printer work and get it ready to print. All right, so I have my SD card here, and I'm just going to set that aside for a moment. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our A5 printers. And so they were shipped, and we want to make sure that everything is still okay and is working on them. So a couple things I want you to check is I want you to make sure that the motors are correctly plugged in. And we're going to have multiple different plugs for those. So I would like you to check those. Still need their computer. We do not need the computer anymore. You may put that to the side. There you go. Thank you. That way we can focus on the printers and we can kind of go through this all the way together. Perfect. Okay, so the first point is we're going to make sure each of the motors is plugged in. And then we also want to check the limit switches. The limit switches are a little bit hard to see. You're going to have one here. You're going to have one right in there. And you're also going to have another back here. So if you can just make sure those white tags are plugged in correctly, then we should be good on that front. So the next thing to check is going to be our belts. So make sure your belt's still tight. Hold on, hold on. Can you point them out again? Because our reception, our projection is a little jumpy. So. Yeah, sure. So here we have the X motor and the. Hold on a second. Stay where you are so they can see because it's still catching up. There we go. So there's the first one, everybody. Do you ever see it? Okay. Second one. Everybody see it? And third. Third one will be here. It's a little bit below that motor. So you can raise the build plate up if you need help seeing it. And that's going to be right here. And this should also be the time that I reiterate that these have a lifetime no question asked guarantee. <laughs> so yes, so if you do find any problems, we are more than happy to work through it with you. If a student cuts a wire or otherwise, we will ship you the parts and we will make them repair it with us. And we will do a video conference with them and they'll have more experience repairing the printers. So we also have a motor value here, which is going to be our Z motor. And then the final two are going to be directly under this build plate, so we can move that out of the way, and we can see those right here. And you can move that build plate, right? Yes, you can move that build plate back and forth.
So I have a feeling most of the motors should be plugged in and should be working well. So the next thing we want to check is make sure that these belts are still on and that they are taut. So you'll have a belt here. On and taut. And you'll have a belt up here. Okay. Yep. Awesome. So one last thing I want you to check is I want you to grasp this outer portion here and I want you to move it a little bit. If it feels like it is way too loose and it feels almost dangerous, I would like you to let me know. We should be good on this and if there's a little wiggle room, it will be perfectly fine. Awesome. Okay, so the next part that we're going to move on to is we're going to do the biggest and hardest part, which is leveling the build plate. Now, this is where most troubleshooting issues come in in that you're going to have to spend sometimes a lot of time trying to perfect. And that's just getting used to how it feels and also the kind of twists and turns that you use to make the build plate move up and down. So if you could, if you have a sheet of paper, so I have a sheet of paper here. If you can fold that in half. Right, you're talking to a, a paperless school essentially, but we got one. I have a piece of paper. We have a piece of paper. Awesome. Right. We're, 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 we're done here. Okay, we got it. We're good. Okay, sounds good. So the next part we're going to do is we're going to use this piece of paper and we're just going to set it on top of the build plate for now. The next part we want to do is we're going to plug the printers in. Uh, they already did that. Yeah, we did that. You already have them plugged in? Okay. They're, they're talking to middle school teachers. They did that before they even started recording. I had figured. Okay, so we know where the plug is. That should be good. And next, we have the nice blue screen that boots up. And I want to click once on here. And then I want to ro rotate down to setup. And then we'll click in one more time. And then we're going to go to auto home. And that's going to zero out our X, Y, and Z axis. So the printer should move. And it might take it a little while to get all the way down to the build plate, but once it stops moving, we should be ready to start leveling the build plate. <laughs> all right, looks like mine is ready. Are you guys ready to go? Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we need to disable the motors so we can move the build plate and also our extruder. So I want you to click in one more time, go to setup, and we're going to choose disable motors, which is right below auto home. Now we should be able to move the build plate freely and also this extruder freely. What if you can't? Go back into the setup, 
So click once, go to setup, and then try again to disable motors. Okay, so we all got it? Now, most freely, there should be some give, right? Back and forth? Yeah, yeah there's going to be a little bit of resistance just because we are moving the motors back and forth. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, okay great. so for this portion, go ahead and just unplug the printers. Yep, you can just pull them out. So anytime that you feel like the printer is doing something not good, you can always unplug it. It is the fail safe for these guys. Okay, so now that we have them unplugged and we have the piece of paper on our build plate and under the extruder, we're going to take a look at the different sections that we have. So inside here, which may be a little bit difficult to see, this. All right, go ahead. Okay. So here is a small nut, and this nut is going to be rotated in order to move the build plate up and down. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna reorder that. So you see the spring there? Directly under that is going to be the knob that you can move. And that is one of three. And so how this functions is if we rotate it clockwise, we're going to move the build plate up. And if we move it counterclockwise, we're going to move it down. So I say clock up, count down. So what we want to do is we want to move this assembly, the extruders, directly over that knob that we just found. And it may be hard to find it a little bit, so you can always kind of look at it from the side and move it to the right spot. So mine is directly over it now. And the piece of paper is in between. And so I want you to try and slide that piece of paper. The piece of paper should have a small amount of resistance. We don't want a whole bunch and we also don't want it to be loose. So if you feel that the paper is loose, I want you to go clockwise to make it go up, and it feels like you can't move the paper, then I want you to go counterclockwise to move it down. So mine's a little bit tight, so I'm going to go counterclockwise to move it down. And now the resistance I feel on the paper is a lot nicer, and that should be a level nut. Drew, do you use the nut Sorry? Do you use the nut directly below the extruder to adjust it first? Yes, yes, we want the nut directly below the extruder. Is there a trick to getting your hand in there? Yeah, really. you can pull the paper if you're having trouble getting your hand inside that area, you can move the build plate back out, oh, adjust yeah. it, and then move it back in. I got you, thank you, that makes sense. Yeah, of course. What was it, clockwise up, clock up? Clock up, count down. If you're having trouble getting the paper back under it, you can push down on the build plate because it is on springs and move the paper under it. So this is something that you kind of have to get used to and get used to the feel of the resistance of paper, and you'll gain that over time. Uh, yes? Is there filament still coming out of it? We did unplug the printers, right? So what, where 
Okay, so we have that kind of resistance on that first one. Okay, next we're going to move it out. So we're going to push the extruder assembly to the far side, and we want to align it with this outside one right here. So we want to put it directly above that one. And then we want to do the exact same procedure with this side. And so for me, this side still feels pretty good and I have a nice small resistance on the paper. So I'm not going to change mine. I want you guys to make sure you repeat the thing and you also make it the same amount of resistance as you did on this inside one. Yep. Not unless you leave them in the same spot. If you're moving them consistently and they're actually changing positions from different desks to other places or they're being packaged, you will have to do this again just to make sure. Usually you don't have to change this if you're not moving them either off those carts or into an area that has a sloped kind of table. So this is something that you can either perform every couple weeks or depending upon how much they are moved and manipulated, then you may have to do it more often. But this is also something that the idea is that the kids learn how to do this, correct? Exactly. That's exactly what this is for. So hopefully you guys will never have to do this again, except for demonstrating to your students. And we want the kids to be comfortable with these. That's why they are so sturdy and that they're rigorous for the classroom. And if they do manage to break it in some way or some form, all you have to do is request a support ticket. That's something that they can also do through their emails, which will link to yours. And then we'll be able to give them a response and guide them through th fixing it. All right, so moving on to the next step, we just finished that level on this side. And then we have one final one here in the back. So I'm going to rotate this guy around. And you should see him right here. So again, we want to put the extruder above that nut. And then we're going to clock up or count down to make sure that it is level. So mine is extremely loose in this area. So I'm going to do clockwise to move it up. Oh, a little bit too much, and all right, that's good. The reason we do this is so that we don't have the extruder too close, which doesn't let the plastic come out or we don't want it too far away, which would make the plastic not stick to the build plate and be stringy. So do we feel comfortable with that? Yeah. Are we all good? Nope, so what we're going to do now is we're going to plug it in. Once we plug it in, we're going to click the button. We're going to go to setup. And this time we're going to choose an option called preheat PLA. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, so we're going to go into the preheat Drew, is there a 
place in this machine where if you touch it, you're going to burn yourself? The only spot that you can burn yourself on this machine is that nozzle. So the best way to see it is going to be move it to the back. And you see that small little point that's touching the build plate there? That is the only point that gets too hot that you will burn yourself. And it is hard to get to. So it's hard for a kid to just get there. That's all we need to Not impossible. No, of course not. <laughs> not impossible, but they will have to be trying to burn themselves or touch that nozzle to get hurt. I was going to say, middle school, but curiosity, curiosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go Okay, so did we plug them in and click preheat PLA? Sure. All right, so I want you to select the value auto home again, and we're going to go ahead and level it all over again. Make it zero, zero, zero by clicking on auto home. So it should be back into this position with a heated nozzle. So if you look at that display screen at the very first screen, it's going to have two values here on the nozzle. The top one is what it wants to heat to, and the bottom one is what it currently is at. I'm at 221. Over to, that's a higher, it's at 220 now. Yeah, it's going to cycle kind of back and forth as it turns on and off the heating block. No problem. Cool. Mine says Okay, so next we're going to take our piece of paper again, and we may need to make sure to disable our motors. And now I can move my build plate, and now I want to slide that piece of paper under the nozzle again. And the reason that we're readjusting this is that there may have been plastic that was stuck to the nozzle before. And so that would change how the distance is between the build plate and our nozzle. So we want to make sure by doing this that we're knocking off all of the plastic and that we have a nice level build plate. So if you can go through those steps one more time, and then we should have a level surface. I need power, 7%. And remember, clock up, count down. Can you, can you repeat again? From where? Which, which part? The very last thing about um, what you do to level it. Okay, so we're going to level it the same way, but the reason why we're re-leveling is that there may have been plastic that was still stuck to the nozzle. And by heating it up and putting the paper back under it, we can break that plastic loose and we have a better assumption of a level build. So I'm going to rotate around and I'm going to level it the exact same way as before on each of the nuts. With it turned on? All right, mine feels level. <laughs> Once you get your build plate level, go ahead and unplug it. Okay, I'll unplug it again. Yep, we're going to unplug it just because our nozzle is hot and we don't want it to stay heated like it is. Okay. Just so our, if you need to deheat it in any way, you can always just unplug it and it should immediately start cooling off. How much longer does it take to get the next step? 
For the next step, all we have to do is transfer the print, and we should be able to print by putting the filament in. All right, let's do it real quick then. So plug it back in. I want you to auto home the device one more time. And now I want you to click on, we're gonna go back up to main. We're going to go to controls and move axis. Now we're gonna select move one millimeter and move Z axis. And we're gonna move that up to say about 16. The reason we're doing this is because we're about to put plastic in and we don't want it to glob up on the build plate. Yeah, 16 millimeters should be good. So we just need to move the nozzle away from the build plate is the goal. I got that cool. Okay. Next, we're going to hit setup and we're going to hit preheat PLA so that we heat up our nozzle and we can put in our plastic. Yes. Okay. Then we're going to take our plastic filament that we have, and my end is a little bit rough, so I want to take these shears and I'm going to snip it off at an angle. It helps us feed it through better. The next talk. Next part is to take that strand and we're going to feed it into this small little hole next to our Z axis. And we do that by clinching this yellow portion and threading it through. And it should go a decent way and you should see it move through the tube. Once it stops, you should feel resistance and push a little bit more and see if it's coming out your nozzle end. And so mine came out and you can see the yellow filament just squirting out of there. Okay, now what, what, when you say coming out, do you mean just past the yellow thing or all the way, you push it all the way through? Push it all the way through. All the way? All the way, that way? All the way. Yep, you wanna push it all the way through the yellow and through the tube so that you start seeing plastic coming out of the nozzle. Right here. How much, how far do you put it out the nozzle? You should just be able to squirt a little bit of plastic out and that means our extruder is primed. All right, the next part, we want to take our SD card, the small little portion that we had before. Take the SD card and we're going to put it directly into the front of the printer, which is going to be right here. So we'll insert it. Now, is our Z axis supposed to still be at one point? Zero one six, or is it back to zero now? 
No, it's all right if it's still sitting at that because when we print, it'll auto home itself. Did we get our SD cards in place? Not quite yet. It's on its way. Sure. The SD card goes under the button, and you should feel it click into place. The next part is you're going to click the button and you're going to go to refresh SD card. Okay. And then you're going to select print from SD. Okay. And then you're going to select the dice that you sliced. And once you click on it, it should immediately go to the home screen, say it's heating, and then it should go to zero, 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 and it will start the print. And so mine went ahead and started. Zero, zero, zero. Here we go, baby. And then it's going to move up to make sure it moves the plastic out of the way, and then it'll go to the spot that it wants to start printing. So did we get it printing? How long does it take? I think these cubes are typically, they're going to be about 14 minutes to about 20 minutes. There should be an estimate in Cura for you. I'm sorry, could you repeat that for me? So you don't have to do anything once this is done. If you let it print and stay in the area that it's in right now, whenever it finishes printing, it'll immediately cool off and you won't have to worry about it. Okay. So you can come back and look at your cube. And how do we, do we just use the tools here to snip it off and? Yeah, if you want to get it off of the build plate, you can use these clips here and you can take off this blue build plate and bend it a little bit to pop the model off. Okay, great. Yeah. So there's a couple steps that I didn't get to go over, which are in our guidebooks, which are on your SD cards. And that's just a couple troubleshooting issues like soft pulls and then leveling the build plate and a little bit of uh, stuff you can go over through that. If okay. you need help in any form like that, we are more than welcome to do another video conference and follow up training. I was going to say, we're probably at some point going to be doing another conference, uh, okay. probably smaller groups or per department. <clears throat> and I'm sure we'll have, you'll, you'll get to know us well. <laughs> Certainly. Sounds good. Sorry that it took so long today. It was still a little bit hard to get through everything, so. No, yep, that's fine. We will uh, plan. I will follow up with the teachers and see what we, what we feel like our next steps are. And okay. where, where will this video be for those who want to um, review?
I will send you a follow-up email with a direct link to the private YouTube version of this. Perfect. All awesome. right. Perfect. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course, Dan. And you will hear from us soon. Sounds good. Have a good day. You too.